was abducted by the RDA. For 15 years, they kept me from my world. Now, I must reconnect with my people. Diving into the world of Avatar Frontiers of Pandora is like stepping into a rainbow explosion of a jungle. Whether you're strolling through the Kingler Forest or hopping around the lush green plains of the High Prairie, the game is pretty much a feast for the eyes. The plants are like something out of a neon dream, wiggling to the beat of the wind, and they even react when you poke them. After a while, you'll get the hang of which plants are chill and which ones are sneak around worthy. Graphics-wise, sure, it's not exactly what the first trailers promised, but hey, it's far from being an eyesore. There's something magical about watching the graceful terror horses galloping across the prairie or spelunking in caves lit only by glow-in-the-dark plants. And those areas slowly dying from RDA factory pollution? Heartbreaking. But when they spring back to life in vibrant green, it's like a high-five moment for Mother Nature. For someone like me, though, all those sensory fireworks sometimes meant I couldn't see the forest for the trees, literally. Without peeping at the map every so often, I'd have no clue where I was. But for the bushcrafty types, this is probably a walk in the park. Ubisoft gives you two ways to play this Pandora party. There's the guided mode with handy quest markers, and then there's the exploration mode, which is more like a game of hot and cold with hints. Finding plants using your hunting book and the map is cool, but sometimes it feels like a full-time job, scanning every nook and cranny. Thank goodness for the Avatar Vision, a detective-like ability that highlights plants, characters, and quest items, even letting you see enemies through walls. It's a lifesaver for staying on top of their whereabouts and targeting their weak spots, which also means better loot for crafting. Traversing Pandora on foot can feel like a marathon at times, but your trusty Ikron, a flying lizard you get as the story progresses, adds some zip to your travels. Just remember to feed it, or it turns into a lazy bones. Resource gathering is a big part of the game, fitting nicely into the world and adding a sprinkle of survival elements. Not my usual cup of tea, but the downtime before big story quests often hit the spot. Discovering stuff often leads to neat rewards like ancestral skills, which do cool things like reducing fall damage or letting you double jump. Armed with homemade weapons, you take on the bad guys, the RDA, and their metal suits. But when your bows and spears don't cut it, you get to play with the human weapons, which pack a bigger punch. And there's this hacking pistol for disabling exosuits, giving you the edge in a pinch. But remember, you're still a fragile, nature-loving Navi. A few hits and you're pushing up the colorful daisies of Pandora. Stealth is key, especially since healing items are limited and health regenerates based on your stamina, which needs food to boost. Then there's the power level system, similar to what Ubisoft used in other games, but it can be a pain. Even enemies slightly above your level can wipe the floor with you. It feels like the game is nudging you to grind for better gear and weapons just to keep up with higher level missions. The story puts you in the shoes of a Na'vi orphan, raised by the bad guys, the RDA, to be a blue-skinned killing machine. Predictably, you escape and join the Resistance, meeting other Na'vi tribes to kick the humans off Pandora. The narrative is straight out of the movies, but it leans heavily on cliches. The message about humanity's ego driving the world to ruin is important, but the storytelling is as subtle as a sledgehammer. You know the RDA is the villain right from the start, and the Navi's wise sayings can sometimes be a bit much. And don't get me started on the pacing. It can be all over the place. One minute you're stuck in a lengthy cutscene, the next you're blowing up RDA facilities like it's no big deal. If you were cool with how the movies handled things, the game might not feel as heavy-handed to you. But brace yourself for some serious suspension of disbelief. And honestly, Ubisoft could have dialed back the NPCs while gesticulating in the dialogues. So that's Avatar Frontiers of Pandora for you. A visually stunning trip through an alien world with a mix of excitement, a bit of grind, and a story that's a little too on the nose. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed our review and subscribe to Curiosity for more content on the latest in gaming and technology. Your support means the world to us and helps us keep bringing you these in-depth reviews. Share your thoughts in the comments below. We love hearing from you and often join in the conversation. Until next time, keep exploring, 
stay curious, and as always, thank you for watching Curiosity. See you in the next video.